When we think about menopause, we tend to think about hot flushes or hot flashes if you're not in the UK, or possibly joint aches, getting a bit snappy. But in reality, there are very, very many symptoms. Over 40 in actual fact, although given the experts kind of disagree on this, some saying 34, some saying 100 or more. It's really hard to know which symptoms are directly related to menopause because actually menopause itself, that transition through menopause is a disruption in our hormones and our hormones affect just about every function in the body. So it kind of stands to reason that if our hormones are all over the place, then the range of symptoms is likely to be pretty big as well. So in this video, I wanted to share some of the, the less obvious symptoms. Um, I'm not gonna go through all 40 or more because we would be here forever, but I just wanna share with you some of the, the less obvious ones and also a, a little bit of my experience of some of those symptoms that I hadn't realized were related to menopause that I thought were far more serious and actually was quite relieved when I found out that they were. Hi, I'm Bev, welcome to this video. This is day four in my Vlogtober series all about menopause and ADHD in recognition of the fact that it is Menopause Awareness Month and also ADHD Awareness Month. And over the course of this month, I'm gonna be sharing videos every day on one of those topics. The reason I can talk about both of those things is because I've experienced both. I was a late diagnosed ADHD, because was diagnosed at the age of 56. And I've also gone right through the whole menopause transition and had a pretty awful time and in the early stages. And I ended up resigning from a very long time career because of my symptoms. I then went on to teach about menopause for over six years, working with some fairly big and uh, prestigious companies, helping to raise awareness of menopause in the workplace. I'm also the author of the book, The Business of Menopause. So I kind of know my stuff when it comes to menopause. I'm not a doctor, I'm not a medical practitioner. So the things that I talk to you about today are based on my knowledge and understanding from years of being a member of the British Menopause Society and doing a lot of study into menopause and also my own experience. But if you want to get checked out for symptoms that you might be experiencing that may or may not be menopause, I would definitely speak to your GP and please don't treat this video as medical advice. Okay, let's get into this then. So I went through my menopause. Um, it took about, I would say, looking back, probably eight or nine years to get through. And I became postmenopausal around about two years ago. I still do get some symptoms, but I'm glad to say they are way less than they were before. So in simple terms, the symptoms related to menopause can kind of fall into three categories emotional and psychological, things like depression, anxiety, confidence, and all of those sort of mental health related symptoms. Physical, so we're talking things like joint pain and hot flushes, night sweats, migraines. And then the third category are sort of the cognitive symptoms. So these are things like brain fog, memory lapses, forgetting your words, um, feeling overwhelmed because your, your brain's sort of cloudy. And I'm going to talk particularly today about some of the physical symptoms that I experienced. And in another video, I'll go a little bit more into some of the mental health related ones, emotional and psychological ones. And in another video, I'll talk about brain fog and the cognitive ones. But let's talk about the physical symptoms. So as I've already said, many of us associate menopause with hot flushes. But in reality, for a lot of women, they don't get hot flushes. Or if they do, they do start often much later into their menopausal journey. So quite often you could have somebody who's been in perimenopause for a good few years before they start to feel those hot flush changes. And if you're not sure about the terminology around 
menopause, perimenopause, premenopause, postmenopause. I did a video yesterday, so go and watch that one after this one. I'll link it in the description. That'll take you through the different stages of the menopause transition, so you'll understand what I'm talking about. So in terms of physical symptoms, as I say, hot flushes are only just one symptom. Some of the more obscure ones, and certainly ones that I've experienced, aren't always obvious as menopause symptoms. So let me let me tell you a little bit of a story. Around about, I would say about eight years ago now, I had a migraine at work. I regularly used to get, I think they call them migraines with aura. So I didn't necessarily get a headache. I didn't get that nauseous feeling that often happens with migraine but I did get visual disturbances and I'd feel my vision sort of become almost like tunnel vision and I'd get this sort of pixelated silvery flickering in my eyes and it wasn't painful, it didn't lead to a headache, it was just a bit of uncomfortable and a bit of an irritation especially if it happened when you're driving because everywhere you look you see this sort of pixelated image and it sort of distorts your vision and I had them quite you know quite frequently when I say frequently probably two or three times a year and I was at work one time and I, I could feel the migraine coming on I could start to feel my vision going and I was trying to explain to the lady that I worked with at the time what was happening because I, I really need to sort of close my eyes wait for about 20 minutes and they pass and then I'm fine but of course working on the computer at work it was very difficult because I couldn't really focus on the screen so I was trying to explain to her what was going on and I said but it's fine it'll pass in a moment or two but I was really struggling as I was talking to her to remember her name now obviously I wasn't I didn't really say her name in general conversation but in my mind I was thinking I can't remember that woman's name I can't remember her name few minutes later we kind of finished for lunchtime anyway I'll go and have my lunch and by the time I've had my lunch this will have cleared and everything will be fine so I got my lunch out of the fridge I'd made up a salady type lunch and I sat at one of the tables in the restroom chatting to one of the guys I worked with and he jokingly said well what's in the lunchbox today then and I looked at the contents of my lunchbox and I could not find the words for chicken, rice, peppers, any of the ingredients that were in my lunchbox. Try as I might, I could not bring the word into my brain. I could kind of see it, but I couldn't say it. It was like there was a massive disconnect there. And I started to get a bit flustered and a little bit embarrassed. And I was trying to explain to him that I had one of these migraines and that I'd been telling, and I couldn't remember her name. I couldn't remember the name of the lady I worked with every single day, day in, day out, who worked for me, who was lovely. I could not remember her name. And I started to get even more flustered. I could feel my stress levels going up. And he could obviously see that I was getting distressed and asked if I was okay. And I said, you know, I get these headaches and normally they just pass. And I was trying to explain to him that when the visual disturbances come and I get this sort of pixelation it reminds me of the movie and I couldn't remember the name of the movie and I, I was trying to recall it the movie is Predator um, in Predator they have this sort of shimmery alien thing that kind of appears and that's how my eyesight goes but I could not remember how to say the name of the film and I got very distressed, put the lid back on my lunchbox and kind of picked it up and scooted my way out quickly to the ladies' toilets. And I just stood looking in the mirror in the ladies' toilets with tears streaming down my face, wondering what the hell was happening to me. I genuinely didn't know what was happening, but I got quite upset and I went back to my office and spoke to my colleague, whose name I couldn't remember, still couldn't remember. And I tried to explain to her what was happening. And she immediately said, you need to get to hospital. You need to get your husband who worked at the same place as me to come and get you and take you to hospital. And in my usual kind of play it down way, I was like, no, 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 it'll be fine. It'll be fine. I'm sure it's fine. And she was like, if you don't ring him, I'm going to ring him. 
Anyway, I did give him a call and I was expecting him to say, oh, it's just one of your headaches, they'll pass. And he didn't. He was like, right, we need to get you to the hospital. I'm coming right now. So we went straight to my doctor's surgery and the doctor did some tests. Anyway, he said, please just wait here a moment. And thankfully, Mark was with me. And he went away and he was away quite some time. And when he came back, he said, I've had a word with a colleague. I'm going to make you an appointment right now to go uh, to the stroke clinic. And I had this sort of, oh my God, moment. And he rang the hospital and they said, look, we, we can't see her now. We've got her an appointment first thing in the morning. It was obvious that I wasn't having a stroke. I think he was worried it was a TIA. Don't ask me what that stands for, but like a, it's, it, it, I think it's kind of like a mild stroke, although that's not technically quite correct, I don't think. Of course, I went home, spent, you know, slept overnight, had the most incredibly painful migraine. Usually when I have these migraines with the visual disturbances, I don't have any pain. But on this occasion, I had a full-blown migraine. The blinding lights, the feeling sick, all of the things you associate with a migraine. And the next morning, I had to be at the hospital very early for this appointment. When I got there, I got seen by the consultant quite quickly. They did an ultrasound scan of my carotid artery to check if there was a blockage. They also did um, another test. I can't remember what it's called, like an imaging test. And everything was coming back clear. There, so there was no sign of a stroke, which was reassuring, as you can imagine. Um, I was stopped from driving. I wasn't allowed to drive. And I had to go and get an MRI scan, you know, when they put you in that big sort of tube thing and it feels a little bit claustrophobic. And I had to wait a week or so to get that MRI scan. And in that time, as you can imagine, it was quite stressful. I had gone back to work because I felt well after the migraine passed, you know, the next day I felt fine. So I had the MRI scan. I then had to go back and see my consultant again. And he looked at the results and he said, actually, I think you'll find because of your age, it's menopause. Wow. That knocked me sideways. Who, who knew that menopause would cause something so distressing? Nobody had told me. My mum passed away when I was 22 and she was 54. We didn't talk about menopause. And it was so distressing, but incredibly relieving. When I found out that this was all hormone related and it was nothing actually to worry about, I was so happy. So the reason I tell you that story isn't to scare anybody. If anything, it's the opposite. I think the danger with menopausal symptoms is they can be symptoms of other things that are more serious. But equally, th there's this reassurance that if it's not something sinister, and it is, and I'm going to say the just word, it is just menopause, that, that's so reassuring. I think the challenge comes in knowing, is it or isn't it? So I've always sort of maintained, it's probably menopause related, but get it checked out anyway. Another symptom that we don't often realize is menopause related are heart palpitations and potential um, heart issues. Now, there is a link between lowering levels of estrogen and heart health. And I'm gonna talk about that in another video. But as our estrogen levels fluctuate and change throughout the menopause transition, we can find that we end up getting sort of heart flutters, heart palpitations, our heart starts to race and it can be very, very scary. Now, I've had that, but I never actually went and had anything done about it because I, I think by the time I was getting them, I kind of done enough research to know that this was probably hormone related and I wasn't getting any other signs of any heart issues. I wasn't getting any tightness in the chest or anything like that. But I've spoken to lots of women who've been sent for ECGs to check their heart because of these issues they were having. And obviously the, the stress and the distress that comes from worrying about things like that and waiting for your test results. But actually those heart palpitations are very, very common in perimenopause and are normally nothing more than hormonal fluctuations. 
But as I've already said, if in doubt, go and get it checked out. But it's another symptom that we may not be aware of that can, that can cause us a lot of distress. Another physical symptom that we may not be aware of is something called formication. Be careful how you say it. Formication. And it's the feeling of insects crawling under the skin. I think forma is Latin for ants. And it's the idea that it feels like you've got ants crawling under the skin and it's so irritating. I've, thankfully, I've not experienced this, but I've spoken to women who have and it's almost like an itch they can't scratch. Another fairly obscure symptom is tinnitus or ringing in the ears. Thankfully, again, this isn't a symptom that I experienced, but lots of women do. They find that they get this sort of constant ringing in their ears, this tinnitus condition, restless leg syndrome. If you've ever had that feeling when you get into bed and your legs just feel like they're, you can't keep them still, they're, they're, it's like an irritation, you want to keep moving them, they feel like, for, uh, this, this is my experience of restless legs. I find it feels like little electrical impulses almost in my legs that, that kind of feel like my, my legs are shaking or jumping about all of the time. And I find I get that much, much less now than I did. Three or four times a month, I'd find that I'd go to bed and my legs would just be so restless. I found a magnesium spray that I used to spray on my legs really, really helped. But yeah, restless leg syndrome is another one. I could talk about symptoms for an hour. There are so many of them. There are ways to manage them though. And I'll save that for another video this month as well. But I hope maybe if you've been listening to this and you've been experiencing any of those more obscure symptoms, you can feel a little bit more reassured that, you know, chances are it is probably down to perimenopause, menopause. But I'm going to say it again, in case you didn't hear it first time round. If you're in any doubt or if you're in the slightest bit concerned, please do go and speak to a medical practitioner and get it checked out. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found that helpful. I'll be back again tomorrow with day five of Vlogtober. I'd really struggle to keep track of the days and um, I will talk to you then. Take care. I just miss you more than anything